Kim, what's on your radar? Well, Joe Biden is in a world of hurt right now, and I'm worried that at this point, the only way he thinks he's going to get out of it is by starting another war. There, I said it. Now, let me break down why I think Biden and his administration might be more likely than not looking to march us into another battlefield, this time, obviously, in Ukraine. Now, first of all, I don't think it'll happen right away. I think Biden has his fingers crossed that miracles will happen with the Fed raising rates and Omicron winding down, that the economy will start to bounce back on its own over the next few months. But make no mistake, he's mentally grooming us for a possible war just in case he needs to use that card to reinvigorate the economy and resuscitate his presidency. So how did poor old Biden get to the point where war became the only option left? Well, let's start with COVID, the obvious, right? You could say it wasn't his fault that he inherited a pandemic, but actually it was his fault. He signed up for it and promised that in contrast to Trump, he'd follow the science and get the pandemic under control. Yet here we are with the virus very much not under control. We're two years into this pandemic with Biden now at the helm for half of it. Basic things like N95 masks and at-home tests are nearly impossible to find. Biden ignored these measures and instead banked on vaccination and vaccination alone, promising COVID would be gone. Well, it's not gone. And in the process, the situation has created some of the most divided, angry communities we've ever seen in our lifetimes. People are angry and unhappy. And when people are angry and unhappy, they're not likely to vote for you. In connection to this problem, we have workers losing their jobs over vaccine mandates. Even though the federal mandate is no longer in effect, some businesses have pushed forward with them anyway because that's what the liberal news media has been demanding. And as a result, good people, many of whom braved it during the height of the pandemic as essential workers, have lost their jobs. The remaining workers are falling ill with COVID anyway and causing businesses to either shutter their doors until people get healthy or overwork the few healthy workers they have. Moms are being forced out of the workforce because many kids aren't back in per to in-person schooling. Single parents have no idea what to do. When people don't have a job or their business is strained or they're forced to scramble for childcare and education, they become angry and unhappy. And when people are angry and unhappy, they're not likely to vote for you. The supply chain crisis, which people thought was just a temporary backlog repercussion of the pandemic, has not improved. There are still about 100 ships off the coast here in Southern California waiting to port and unload. This is partially one reason why inflation is sky high, though not the only reason. But what people know is they're having to wait longer for certain goods, and when they head to get things like groceries, they're paying way more than they're used to. This is upsetting. People don't like paying more for gas, groceries, and other goods. People are angry and unhappy about it, and when people People are angry and unhappy, they don't vote for you. But that's just poor Main Street's problem, right? Not so. Now Wall Street is in a panic, realizing their party is coming to an end because the Fed needs to raise rates in order to get inflation under control. It's beginning to dawn on Wall Street types that the artificially inflated valuations of their stocks will come crashing down. And this is probably Biden's biggest problem. There's no guarantee. Actually, there's a strong probability that the Fed has lost control and is now just winging it. After all, when inflation started to rise last April, experts kept calling it transitory until they realized it wasn't. Now they're saying they'll start trying to get inflation under control by raising rates in March. Why wait? People want grocery prices to come down now. Many of us think we're heading for a big, big crash. A big economic crash would absolutely make pretty much everyone very angry and very unhappy. And when people are very angry and very unhappy, they not only won't vote for you, but they won't vote for anyone associated with you either. And this is what Biden and Democrats fear most, which is why war is beginning to look more and more enticing. Now, Biden comes from an old school politician way of thinking, which is believing that war is good for the economy. And though many of us argue that's a fallacy and that war is in fact detrimental, one thing's for certain, war is good for ratings. There's nothing that brings both establishment, old school Democrats and Republicans together better than good old fashioned warfare. We saw it when Trump bombed Syria, all the networks nearly in unison praised him as being presidential. Now, if Donald Trump can get CNN to compliment him, then Biden will surely be getting the positive press he desperately needs if he starts a battle. Biden's polling numbers are dismal. But if all the major news outlets begin telling us how wonderful and presidential he is, the tide might turn. And this is exactly why we are much closer to starting a war than we'd like to be.
And I want to point out that I do think it would be us starting this war. I do think that we have been escalating the tensions with Ukraine. Putin has had very specific demands. He has said, look, uh, I just want to guarantee you're not going to expand NATO. You guys promised this a long time ago. Not Don't expand NATO towards the old Soviet bloc. Um, Blinken has come out saying, no, we're not going to promise that, which would be kind of the simplest thing to do. You know, we're, we're sort of creating a new uh, Cuban missile crisis. But, you know, we're doing this to Russia and then we're expecting them to just kind of take it and not and not be uh, not be offended by this. And so we're kind of, you know, we're doing things to antagonize. And it's almost like it's because they I mean, look, the administration needs a war at this point. What else are they going to do? Because I don't know if the Fed is going to be able to correct the economy and COVID is here to stay. So now what? Yeah, the the uh, the beat COVID plan that didn't quite work out. Cases were higher last month than they've ever been at any point in the pandemic. The well, the economy is going to rebound. That plan didn't work. Uh, inflation, yet yeah, everybody's feeling the pain. So I mean, I agree with you. High. We have to work, be on the guard for some kind of foreign policy hawkishness where the media will, just as you said, do the oh, this is the day he became president kind of nonsense because right. they love it. Thought- they love war. And what well, we saw what happened when he pulled out of Afghanistan. Now, look, I yeah. was one that criticized him, not be, and I'm a very anti-interventionist, anti-war person, but I criticized the the bungling of it. I just didn't like the, you know, I, I was like, oh, why didn't you just do this in May? Why did you have to wait till September, August to do this uh, if you were going to be the adult in the room? But the re- you know, a lot of other establishment media was criticizing him because they were they were, you know, it's like they couldn't believe that we were ending a war. Um, and they were they were kind of pointing out, oh, no, look at the Afghan people, what they're going to be left with as if we should just stay forever and ever and ever, which was, you know, for many of us, uh, not uh, not something we could do. But I'm curious, you know, I mean, what do you think the odds are that they're going to try to march us into a war in order to get Biden's approval ratings up in order to save Democrats? All right. So I agree with so much of what you said, starting with he asked for it. I remember during the election thinking to myself, you have to be crazy to want to be president with this economy during this pandemic. Like, I couldn't understand why he didn't just want to (laughs) let Trump take the next four years and wait it out because the problems were so enormous and I couldn't figure out, you know, my way out of this. And so I thought that I think you're totally right. He signed up for it. I think you're totally right that he is distracting from things like inflation instead of addressing them, gaslighting Americans about the problem that they have instead of actually dealing with them head on or even admitting, look, like this economy is problematic. I'm not sure how we fix it. I'm going to try this or whatever it is, just acknowledging the struggles. However, the reason I think that I, 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 I disagree that there, we're likely to see a war is because exactly because of Afghanistan. Now, there is nothing that unites CNN and Fox News like war, right? You know that war is on the table when CNN and Fox News are saying the same things. They both attacked him ruthlessly about just for mm-hmm. the for, for broaching the withdrawal. Of course, the withdrawal was bungled. But, you know, the, the idea that we would not be at war, the, the idea that a president would stop a war was unconscionable to the mainstream media. And, right. and Biden took them on. Biden took them on. And, and he did not back down despite seeing how it was playing out despite seeing the wall to wall bipartisan condemnation. And I do respect him for that. I do respect him for 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 mm-hmm. digging in. And I so I do think that, you know, he I, I think he is doing some kind of appeasement when he first said during that press conference, look, by, uh, Putin's going to do what Putin's going to do. I thought that was the smartest thing he could have said, because Putin is a saber rattler. Putin loves a big confrontation. And when you say, look, he's going to do what he's going to do, you kind of t- take the wind out of those sails. And then you saw Biden have to, you know, appease the war machine, appease the media, starts, you know, re- responding in a more aggressive tone. But I do think that you are seeing a lot of reluctance to go fully all in. So I don't know. You might you might be right. I agree with you that they need a war. If you think about mainstream media, I agree with you that 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 I think your analysis is spot on. But I'm hoping that we're going to see the Biden who withdraw from Afghanistan, not the way yeah. he withdrew, but the one who withdrew yeah. and took them on. Also, and let's don't you yeah. think if it, if it was Trump, if Trump had been reelected and was in this situation, we would be way more likely to, to go to war, despite his, no, you know, no, no, no. I don't, no, I, I, because Kim, he appoints I don't agree those, with that. I don't he, agree with that. He appoints the Hawks. He appoints yeah. Bolton. He appoints yeah, Pompeo. But, but, his but, rhetoric but, but, is good. And yeah. then he relies on these on, on the very people who support the policies that he's criticizing. And yeah, he doesn't I, know enough and is interested enough to stay. The, so he would he could absolutely get tricked into this. 
I, I think Trump was actually one of the, I think he actually was not interested in war. I mean, I think that mm. was the way, he didn't have very many beliefs, but I do think that was one of his beliefs mm. that he genuinely believed in. And yes, he did fill his cabinet with war hawks, but he didn't listen to him. I mean, he had Bolton there. If he was going to be starting a war with Iran, right. he had somebody chirping in his ear nonstop to go ahead yeah. and do it. Um, so I, I think actually, I don't think Trump would have actually started a war. And I agree with you, Bhatti. I think that Biden, though I don't think he has a staunch um, ideology of being an anti-interventionist by any means, but I do think he is reluctant. But I also think he's, I think he w could be manipulated if if the Democrats said this yeah. is going to be good for the party, we yeah. can't afford to lose yeah. everything. Yeah. So I don't know. I hope not. I mean, not, that's the sad thing. We, we've not. seen that people, no matter how uh, committed a, a political figure seems to the anti-war cause, and no matter how much yeah. they know their base wants that, where they get into office and then they, they do something different. That was true of Obama. Obama was a constitutional yeah. law scholar who seemed yeah. to believe that, you know, what we were doing was not was not legal and should not continue and was elected on that basis. And then it continued. So, yep. Uh, well, let's of, hope no war, guys. No, no war. war. Amen. All right, we all agree on that. Yeah. All, all right. right. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> we'll have more rising right after this.